Hey everyone, and welcome to Skillcapped. My name is The King Live, and today we're going to be going over Yoru lineups that every Yoru player needs to know, and that will help make Yoru one of the best solo carry characters in Valorant. The first thing you probably think of when you hear Yoru lineups is the time that your team's Yoru teleported into the enemy spawn and got killed 10 seconds into the round. Now, although those are technically lineups, aggressive lineups like that are very gimmicky and can oftentimes result in you just throwing rounds. In this video specifically, we're going to be focusing on some more Yoru lineups that are almost always applicable and incredible for carrying games in Valorant. However, if you are looking for those aggressive gimmicky plays, we'll include a few fun TPs that you can do throughout the video, so be sure to watch till the end so you can learn how to make your opponents rage with those aggressive Yoru plays. Before we get into it though, let me introduce our question of the day, which is how do you think Yoru compares to other agents of Valorant? As usual, I will be responding to people who comment down below. I've been playing a bunch of Yoru, so I'm really excited to hear what you guys have to say. Without further ado though, let's get into it, starting off with the first map, Find. Before we get into the teleport lineups though, the first thing I actually wanted to introduce you to is actually a footstep tactic that isn't even really a lineup, but it's just a good thing that I felt needed to be shared. What you can do is at the start of every round, use one of your fake outs to trigger the A-side teleporter. When you do this every round, the offense will become familiar with it, and as the rounds go on, they will likely start to ignore it. Finally, when you believe it's the right time, at the start of the round, you will actually take the teleporter, and then after entering it, you will drop footsteps from inside of it. Because you've dropped the footsteps while inside of the teleporter this time, it will sound no different to them than any of the other rounds, but now, you will be waiting there patiently for them to try to make their entrance on Hookah. It takes some guessing to be able to predict when you believe the enemy team is going to decide to push Hookah, but using this tactic, you can really catch the enemy team off guard and oftentimes outright win rounds for your team. I like to do this on eco rounds, but it's your call on when the best time for this is. Also, if you're worried about them not pushing B, and you want to be able to quickly escape if they do happen to go A, feel free to use your gate crash before the round as a fallback plan if you needed it. Anyway though, getting into our lineups, the first ones I'm going to show you are on defense and primarily used for repositioning. The first one on A site is usable if you are playing U-Haul and expecting a hard push or to be smoked off. You can attempt to pick up a quick kill from U-Haul with this lineup and then quickly TP over towards gate on the back of sight and now hold a different position to help defend against a push. Moving in the opposite direction, if you're looking to go from heaven towards U-Haul, you can use this lineup from the corner of heaven to quickly find yourself where you want to be. I only recommend using this TP though if you know that no enemies are in U-Haul, because otherwise it could quickly result in your death. A lot of Yoru's retake TPs are relative to where enemies could be playing. Keeping this in mind, if you know no enemies are going to be playing showers, you can use your TP to cross site safely and give your team a new position to apply pressure from. What about for B-Site though? If you're looking to retake for B-Site, oftentimes it can be tempting to throw your gate crash through the teleporter into Hookah. This can be a strong tactic if nobody is playing Hookah, as it's a lot quieter than the actual TP noise. However, if there is a chance somebody is in Hookah, it can be a very bad idea. If you're looking for a safer approach, if you angle it more towards the left of the TP, it'll actually exit the teleporter doors and land outside of Hookah, reducing the odds that the player is waiting for you on the other side. Now, moving on, I said at the beginning of the video that teleporting into spawn is normally a bad idea. I'm going to introduce you to the exception to the rule that might actually be good to use sometimes. The application of this TP is if the enemy team is hard pushing B site a lot, what you can do is triple stack B site with your team, and then at the beginning of the round, throw your gate crash through the teleporter at a bit of an angle. It will loop through the back of their spawn and give you the opportunity to flank the enemies as they are pushing B site. Now, I only really recommend taking this if you're confident they're five man pushing B. Otherwise, somebody lurking showers might have seen your TP come through and be waiting for you. However, if they are five man pushing B, you can catch them incredibly off guard with a quick flank and oftentimes win the round for your team. Moving on to some more solid approaches though, you can always use your TP as a fallback to reposition when using weapons like the Operator. Here are two strong places to use your gate crash when opping B long. Time to jump. Yeah. Lastly, here is a really niche lineup that will put your gate crash in Octagon. If you angle it to the left of the box behind tube on sight, it will slide its way straight to octagon and give you another angle when retaking. You can't really use this if the enemy team is playing octagon, but if they're not, it might be of use. One thing that is essential to know on Yoru when playing bind though, is that you can actually send your gate crash directly through spawn to rotate incredibly quickly between the two sites. You can do this on all maps, but it's incredibly strong especially on bind because if you believe the enemy team is going to take the teleporter, you can preemptively prepare this and beat them to the other site if you're proactive enough with it. It's fairly easy to line up, and when done correctly, you will basically cut your rotate time to zero and come up with some really clutch plays. Moving on to offense though, there are some strong TPs that you can do for entry on B site. The first one will place you directly next to the tube on site, effectively getting you past elbow and in a position to attack on site. 
Treating this similarly to a jet dash, this can be a really strong position to help your team take the site from and apply pressure to any players who are playing backside. If you believe there's no players playing elbow, don't be afraid to use your TP to take elbow control quickly too. If the attackers have elbow control, it can make it very hard for rotates to come in for the defenders. Lastly, you can also TP towards cubby on site, but this can be pretty dangerous since it's fairly exposed, and I only really recommend doing this one if your team has a lot of pressure pushing in on the enemies. Moving over to A side, a fairly standard TP will take you into U-Haul. This is incredibly strong and safe if they do not already have U-Haul control. If they do have U-Haul control, it's not recommended to attempt this TP though, as it will likely result in your death. Instead, a TP that you might consider will land you right next to truck on site. You'll be exposed to angles outside of showers and pocket on site, but you'll be safe from the player in U-Haul and anyone back site. So if you have enough pressure from showers, this could be a very strong position. If you're taking site from showers, you have the option of attempting to quickly move towards CT to cut off rotates. Otherwise, you can also TP onto triple stack, which will put you in a fairly forward position and help you apply pressure towards back site. Finally, if you're looking to reposition during a post plant, if you time it correctly, you can make pretty good use of this TP towards back site. Try to be careful though, because you need to time it for when the enemies have pushed through back site and made their way towards spike planted on truck. By setting up an unexpected crossfire here with your team, you can make it very difficult for the defenders to defuse the spike. Finally, if you're looking for some fun gimmicky plays on bind, here are two lineups that will find you in the attacker spawn. As usual with these lineups, I don't recommend using them often because they are definitely gimmicks, but they're pretty fun when you can actually get them to work, so if you want to mess around with them, by all means go for it. Valorant is a video game after all, and you are intended to have fun. And that's all we've got for Bind, but before we move on to Split, if you guys are serious about improving in Valorant, be sure to head on over to skillcap.com to unlock our hyper improvement system. We've got up-to-date lineups for all agents, courses on how to improve in the game, smurf commentaries where a high-ranked player walks you through how to carry in your rank, and so much more. Come join over half a million satisfied members of Skillcap, improve that KDA, and get that rank you've always wanted at skillcap.com. Link in the description below. Moving on to Split though, these first two TPs I'll show you are used to regroup with your team after faking either A or B site on Split. Yoru is really effective at faking pushes, especially when you combine this tactic with an Omen Smoke or a Silver Arrow, and you can really take advantage of teams that you notice rotate very quickly. You don't necessarily need to use this TP at the very start of the round, but if you know your team is pushing A or B site and want to create pressure somewhere else first, this can be a decent tactic to use. These next two TPs are really good for attacking B site. The first one is really awesome if you know nobody's playing back site, because for the enemies to challenge you after you've teleported, they need to full swing your teammates in tunnels, which will surely result in an easy kill. Most of Yoru's lineups are fairly forgiving, so you don't always need to be exact but generally when doing this TP, I'll line it up with the corner of Woodstack and B main so I can use this safely from spawn. The second TP for B site puts you on an unexpected position under rafters. I don't recommend doing this TP solo, but if your team is pushing site at the same time you use this, it can pinch anyone playing pillar and normally result in a kill. As for the middle of the map, there isn't a lot of great TPs, but the one that is very strong is TPing to the other side outside of mailroom. From this position, you can't really be challenged from either mailroom or vents, and you can set up a really strong crossfire on anyone playing close in B tower. You could theoretically do a TP into vents or mailroom, but I wouldn't really recommend this because by the time that it's safe for you to do it, the TP won't even really be necessary. Moving on to A site on offense, if you wanted to teleport towards screens, either of these TPs is usable. The first one will put you just outside of screens in the corner to the right. This position is exposed to anyone on site though, so it might not always be the best idea. However, if you have a Brimstone or a Viper on your team, you can use their smoke on screens to teleport into more safely. Depending on the timing in the round, it's probably unlikely a player will be in this smoke, so by using the synergy, you can set up some really nasty flanks. If you wanted to make your way onto A site though, here's a TP that will put you in the corner on A. You don't need to be super precise with it, but I recommend placing yourself in a position where you won't be spotted from sight, and then lining up your crosshair with the lines on the ground. This should land deep in the corner of sight. Now, a rule of thumb I'd like to share with you when playing Yoru is that if you don't know if there's an enemy waiting on your teleporter or not, the answer is almost always yes, they are. Using this rule, remember, if you're going to use a TP like this blindly, try to make sure your team is pushing at the same time so that you can at least get the trade. Similarly, here's a TP that you can do into ramps at the start of the round, to set up a double peek with one of your teammates from the other side. Try to avoid doing this solo though, because ramps is a very common position to play, and you need your teammates pressure to push anybody back who might be close. Lastly, for A site, sometimes you'll find yourself in a situation where you're trapped on site. For situations like that, this is a decent lineup you can do to get yourself off site and towards A main. Line up next to this intercom or whatever these things are called and aim towards the center of pillar on site. When done right, this should take you all the way up to ramp, which can be really good to reposition during post plants if it's needed. Lastly, one thing I really love about Yoru is he's really good at dealing with standard Killjoy Cypher setups on offense. So here are two common sets of footsteps I like to use to clear out any standard Cypher trips on the trash can of B or any Killjoy alarm bots on A. Moving on to defending split though, these first two lineups will help you rotate between A and B site incredibly quickly throughout the rounds. 
You need to be a little proactive when setting up these plays, however, since rotates can happen so quickly through the middle of the map on split, you can land some really amazing out plays when you're expecting the enemies to rotate and you're able to cut them off. Another thing this is great for is playing against those teams that tend to full commit to a site very early. If you find the enemy team is rushing you, you can use one of these lineups at the start of the round, and they'll be wondering how you always manage to be at the site they are pushing. What if your team is having trouble holding B tower though? Here are two setups for TPs that you can use to create pressure in B tower, and then fall back to a second position to catch your enemies off guard. The first one lets you fall back towards hell. Oftentimes you can grab a kill in tower by using your flash to catch the enemies off guard, and then use your TP to take a new point of attack and pick up another kill for yourself. If you've already done the hell TP once or twice though, another TP that is incredibly strong is the one that will take you to the back site of B. By falling back to this position, you provide your B player with a lot of assistance, and it turns your B defense into a terrifying position to push into. All of these uses of Yoru's gate crash can be massively effective, but are also very low risk, so your team won't get mad at you for dying every round. You're welcome. If you're looking for similar repositioning techniques to use on A, two really strong TPs that you can do are towards slant on A from heaven. This is also usable while retaking A site, but it can be very dangerous because if they see it coming, they might just wait for you to TP. If you're going to use this while they are on site, I recommend throwing a flash to give yourself more of a fighting chance when you arrive. And the other TP that you can use will get you towards elbow on A site, which is a strong position to anchor the site from if you get info that they are hard pushing site. Moving on to Ascent, there are a couple of wild TPs that you can do into the enemy spawn. I'm going to get these out of the way just to introduce them, but like I said at the beginning of the video, these are fairly gimmicky, so I don't recommend using them often. Line up the right wall into the corner of the generator, and then aim at the center of the generator. I don't actually know if these things are called generators, but they kind of look like generators, so that's what I'm calling them. I'm calling them generators. This TP will take you into the defender spawn. It will also likely get you killed, but hey, if it doesn't, it'll get a cool clip. The second TP you can use while executing onto A site, if you're standing near the button and aim towards the window where it would be in garden, your TP should glide all the way into the defender spawn. Once again, wouldn't super recommend using this, but if you want to, it's there. Moving on to more practical TPs though, for A site, this is a lineup that will put you below heaven without having you expose yourself to use it. This is a fairly forgiving lineup, so I wouldn't worry about it too much, but generally when throwing your OSTP, you want to have it enough at an angle where it would go in the direction that you want it to, but it will also glide as quickly as possible along the wall. Using this tactic, you can also use this TP towards the door by tree, which provides you a great amount of cover, while also putting you in a strong position to attack generator and sight from. This lineup is decently precise to get it to hug the left side quickly, so as for any of these lineups, I recommend giving it a test in a custom game just to get the feel for it before taking it into comp. Moving on to B site, you can use this lineup to get yourself into Boathouse. This is a fairly risky lineup to use blindly, however it is very strong to use in combination with a Killjoy ultimate, or if you believe there is nobody playing on sidewalk or site. Another TP that you can do though when executing site is if you have a brimstone, you can TP into a smoke towards spawn. Similarly to the tactic that we talked about on split, it can be very strong as it's harder for players to punish your TP since they'll be in the smoke where they can't see you. Also similar to the TPs that we talked about on split, here are two TPs that you can use to regroup with your team when faking presence on either A or B. These are particularly useful on Ascent since oftentimes the defenders will not fight over control of B or A main, so you can normally grab the orb for free and then teleport out to regroup with your team, effectively faking some presence and securing yourself an ultimate orb while not leaving your team all alone. Lastly on attack, it's worth mentioning that using your footsteps along sidewalk can be a really smart tactic to deal with killjoy alarm bots for your team before attempting to walk out onto site. If there's an alarm bot on the sidewalk, you can normally assume that there's also nano swarms ready there as well, so be careful when entering the site. Moving on to defending split with Yoru though, similar to the tactic that we talked about on split, because the defender spawn is a straight shot to both sides, don't be afraid to use your TP to rotate between sites quickly if you have to. This is going to be a common theme throughout the video because oftentimes in comp you're going to be running into teams that just like to hard push sites, and being able to be wherever they are at really gives you a lot of presence within the game. If the enemy team is hard pushing a lot, I highly, highly recommend making use of these TPs. If you're defending B split, however, a strong thing that you can do is use your TP towards the corner of Boathouse and play towards stairs on site. You can take the first peek towards the enemies and try to land a quick kill and then swiftly dip back towards site using gate crash and get ready to hold down your position now from back site. You can do a similar tactic from over in market as well. Assuming you have a player who is also playing B site, this can be really effective if you get smoked off, or even if you just want to try rotate to help them. Most characters aren't able to quickly cross this gap to help their teammates, which is part of what makes Yoru so strong on defense. Lastly, if you're looking for some more fun gimmicky TPs on Ascent, here are a few that you might be able to mess around with. I wouldn't recommend using these all that much in your games, as like I said before, they are very much gimmicks, but they would be pretty funny if you were able to pull them off, so I figured I'd share them with you anyway. To be honest, these are the kind of plays that give Yoru a bad rep as a character. A lot of people believe that these sorts of aggressive TPs are all Yoru is good for, but he's actually a fairly solid agent when played right. Anyway though, moving on to our Haven setups, the first TP is a fairly basic one. This one will get you to the other side of Garage from attacker side. I don't recommend doing this solo, as if a player is in Garage, it's very likely they will notice your TP and kill you. However, if you couple this with a flashbang and have your teammates peek behind you, it can almost guarantee a solid entry for your team. Next, if you're looking to enter onto C site, you have two options. You can either use Gatecrash on the back of site, 
or you could use it to place yourself on default. If you're going back sight, the benefit of this is that you should be covered from garage pretty well, but exposed to the back of sight, of course. If you're going towards default, you should be covered from back sight, but exposed to garage. It really depends on where you believe the defenders are playing. However, if your team is pushing in through garage at the time, it's likely a better idea to use the TP towards default as it'll be a lot safer for yourself. Another smart idea here for this TP, and pretty much any TP you will use on Yoru, is coupling it with a flash, just to provide you with as much of a chance as possible when landing. Moving on to the middle of the map, you can do some funky stuff from here with Yoru if you really want to. There's not a bunch of perfect lineups to land yourself on B site, however, if you want to take yourself to either A link or C link, we do have lineups for that. You can go towards A heaven by angling your TP towards the left wall of A link, or if you want to go towards A site, you can angle it towards the right wall of A link. Similarly, if you want to go towards C, you can use your TP towards the back wall of C link, and it will take you in that direction easily. These TPs are really dangerous though, and you should only really take them if you're fairly confident nobody is in these positions. One decent TP if you're looking to land yourself on B site though, is this lineup which should take you right into the default plant location for C site. Honestly, even just crossing this little gap here onto B site can make the site incredibly hard to defend, so try not to underestimate small TPs like this. Speaking of basic teleports, don't be afraid to just throw out a standard TP to cross a gap safely. People have this issue primarily when playing characters like Sova, but not everything needs to be an elaborate lineup. It's okay to just throw out a basic TP, in fact, most of the time that's going to be how you're going to use it. It's important to be able to think of plays on the fly to find what's best for you in that moment. Anyway though, moving on to defense, if you're looking to rotate quickly from A to C site on Haven, it's no different than any of the other maps, here's a lineup you can use for that. Similarly, going from C to A isn't quite as good, but it still gets the job done. And since Haven is a pretty heavy rotation map, these can definitely come in handy. The next lineup that works wonders when defending Garage is this one that will take you towards back C site. It's not too precise, but try to give it enough of an angle so that it will travel quickly, as this one you generally want to use to get yourself out of Garage and prepare for a C push. Since Garage can be fairly hard to hold as a defender, this can be a really great way for you to look for one kill and then quickly dip out to safety and help hold C. Moving over to A site, something a lot of players don't know is you can actually use your TP to get out of heaven for retakes. Since this is generally smoked, what you can do is you can hop into the windowsill and then look directly at the edge of it. From here, there are four great spots that you can send it towards for retake, and you can really catch enemies off guard. If you know nobody's playing short, I recommend the short one. If you know nobody's playing long, I recommend the long one. If you know nobody's playing sight, I recommend the one that takes you to the corner by long. As for all of these TPs here though, I highly recommend throwing a flash along with it just to give yourself as much of a safety net as possible because this is fairly aggressive still. When you do this while your team is attempting to retake through CT, it can be incredibly hard for your enemies to stop and can result in a very easy retake. Lastly, if you're looking for some fun gimmicky TP plays on Haven, here's some very aggressive ones that are normally a bad idea. The first one will take you to grass and middle, and the second one should take you all the way to the attacker spawn, but you have to get at a pretty awkward angle on C long to use it, so it's really not a great idea most of the times. However, if they never push C, I don't know, maybe it's something fun you could do. And then moving on to our last map, Icebox, you probably expect that there's more crazy lineups here, but just the way that it's constructed, there's really not a bunch to go into. However, I've compiled all the best ones for you just so when you're playing Icebox, at least you're not left in the dark. Starting off with the tried and true rotate TPs for defenders, you can easily rotate through spawn from either side by sending the TP through the connector outside of kitchen, Make sure you angle it through the doorway at a slant, just so the teleporter doesn't get stuck halfway. But also aside from these two TPs, if you wanted to rotate through middle, there's this nifty TP that you can do from A. Sit underneath rafters on A and aim at the line at the center of boiler. This TP should glide under the middle and land right next to orange, giving you a different angle to retake from. Be careful when using this one though, as if anyone's in mid, it could be dangerous, but if you have a player in mid saying it's clear, this is a viable strategy. Moving over to defending a site, a good reposition that you can do is using your gate crash from generator, send it back to the corner by screens, and then using this, you can safely play a one and done angle and then retreat towards your team for retake. If you wanted to get more aggressive on a site, however, you can use the same TP and actually push up quickly to catch your enemies off guard. You can oftentimes find yourself one quick kill by doing this and then peace out back to safety, making the round of 5v4. Theoretically, you could do a really aggressive TP here as well and that would land you in the attacker's entrance of A, but this is very much a gimmick and I would not recommend this. If you're looking to play Kitchen on Yoru, there's a nifty lineup that you can do that will send your TP over towards yellow on B site. This isn't great if they're pushing B, however, if they do push you in Kitchen, you can use this to fall back towards yellow to regroup with your B player and then prepare for a B execute through Kitchen. There aren't many good TPs for B site, unfortunately, but don't be afraid to use it just to fall back to Snowman man or sight from yellow. This way you can hold an aggressive angle on long and then safely retreat back if you're getting pushed. Lastly on defense, if you're retaking A, a decent TP that you can use will place you behind generator. It's relatively aggressive, but if done right, can be pretty useful. I recommend doing this with a flash to mask it a bit. And then if you really want to go into their spawn, you can use this TP through mid. It should glide straight up their spawn and give you a little fun angle to fight the attackers from. Moving on to attacking side though, if you're looking for a quick rotate through spawn, have we got a deal for you. It's super simple, just aim your gate crash across the way and it'll take you exactly where you want to go. 
Use this to fake pushes on A or B and apply pressure for your team. When attacking A, the classic TP that you can attempt will take you into the corner of A site. Not always the best idea, but still applicable and pretty easy to perform. As usual, you'll want to perform this TP while using a flash just to make it a bit safer. When attacking B site, it's very tempting to teleport straight across towards Snowman. I urge you against doing this because it's likely going to get you killed since it's so open. Instead, what you can do though, is if you have a Brimstone or an Omen, teleport into their smoke towards Snowman and then use this opportunity to flash out and catch some unprepared targets. When playing post plan on B, sometimes you can find your team gets stuck on yellow. Here's a strong TP to give yourself an option to flank if you feel it's a good idea. If you aim along the right side wall moving up towards the default plant, this TP will ride all the way along towards the back of orange, giving you a very strong angle to pinch your enemies from if need be. Lastly, we have two final lineups for middle. The first one is the classic mid to orange TP that we've all probably seen by now, and the second one is the one that you probably haven't seen. It'll walk its little way straight through middle and find itself under rafters on A. A very niche use, but if you don't have mid control at the time, could potentially catch some players off guard. Anyway, that is all the lineups I have for you today, and remember, if you want to improve, win more gunfights, and get the rank that you've always wanted, you should check out skillcap.com. Link in the description below. I tried my best to give you all applicable lineups that you can use on Yoru in almost every single game, so if you guys learned something new, be sure to drop the video a like down below. Also, be sure to answer our question of the day, which is, how do you think Yoru compares to other agents in Valorant? I'll be responding to you guys personally, so I'm really looking forward to what you have to say. That's all for us today, though. Thanks again, guys. My name is The King Live, and we here at Skillcap want to thank you all for watching. We'll catch you in the next one.